Hi everyone, how are we all doing today? Robert and Olivia here to do our virtual, first virtual wine tasting discussion uh, for you this afternoon uh, in regards to our new wine club, Red Wine Club release. We have our 2015 Old Vine Zinfandel from Cucamonga Valley and our 2015 Vecchio Frate from outside the Paso region that we bring in. Um, two lovely wines. We we're just sitting here tasting them here before we started filming here and just kind of talking about them. And uh, very excited to send these, uh, these wines to you for your, uh, your new shipment. Uh, say hello, Olivia. Hello, everybody. And we're excited to be doing this with you today. And um, our first wine is the 2015 Old Vine Zinfandel, which Rob mentioned. Um, I think this one, what makes it stand out so much is it's just clean, balanced, and such an easy wine to pair with food. It goes with, I feel like it would go so well with any tomato-based, meat, um, Italian foods. And you could also, anything with a little extra spice, black pepper, um, it would just pair so well with that. Um, this wine, right off the nose. You realize this is prime rib too. I've been thinking prime rib here. I'm not a prime rib guy myself, any, but I'm not a prime rib guy myself. I can see it's going really well with prime yes. rib. And forgive us if we're not so good at this. We're, this is our first attempt, so bear with us. We're gonna do our best as well. Uh, as we, you know, swirl along here. So right off the bat on the nose, I definitely noticed um, a little bit of that like eucalyptus yeah, mint you get from that yeah. Cucamonga Valley Zinfandel, yeah. what it's so famous for. Um, you definitely get some raspberries, some cherries. Nice deep cherry notes, dark cherry notes. Yes, dark cherry notes, but more on like the brighter mm -hmm. side. So you can tell that this Zinfandel fruit wasn't sitting on the vine really late. So the alcohol is going to be under 14. It's 13.7% alcohol. Um, whereas if you mm. let the Zinfandel fruit sit for a couple more Brix degrees, you're going to get more of that jammy, really fruit forward um, style Zinfandel. So this one, like I said, it's clean, balanced, bright fruits. Um, what else? We got some... Soft tannins on the finish, uh, nice medium body wine, maybe medium to medium, just under medium plus. So not punchy in the face type of red, just a nice uh, sipping wine for, with food. And of course, if you, this is like she said, it's gonna pair really well with the items she previously mentioned. Um, I definitely get some nice like black pepper spice, some mm -hmm. sage on the palate. Yeah, yeah, and, all um, the above. It's, I, it's lovely, I didn't have this in a while. It was aged 20 months in 30% new French and American oak. You said the alcohol. Yep, 13.7% alcohol. Okay. So I think it's just, again, very food friendly, easy drinking, goes with so many foods and just a easy crowd pleaser. We hope you enjoy it. Yes, enjoy. Cheers, salute. Cheers guys. Happy quarantine. <laughs> okay, on to the Vecchio Frate. A very fun wine, very exciting vintage. Uh, for those of you who may not know, Vecchio Frate means old friar in, uh, in Italian. And we, uh, I made, started making this wine uh, back in the beginning days in honor of my family's original brand name after Prohibition called Old Friar. And I thought I'd just do a little different twist and so I looked up uh, the Italian uh, language for it and uh, it came up with Vecchio Frate and I thought it sounded cool. So that's pretty, the story is that simple. So um, we just tried this wine yesterday. We're really excited about it. So we think this might be the best vintage we've ever done. Yes. Um, so with that being said, I'll start pouring here. I think that Lagrine is one of the most underrated, under the radar wines. The varietal is so dense, so intense, and um, it's just such a fantastic varietal. And I'm so excited that Robert was able to find this amazing vineyard. Outside of Lodi, <laughs> it's not working. It's not working. All right, like Robert said, we tried it yesterday. Oh my goodness, you guys, this is just huge. We're back to that like, really jammy, fruit forward, but then some earthiness in there, like just chewy tannins. Um, the color is just inky, dark it's ruby. I mean, it's it's like ink. Fun little uh, tidbit about this this vineyard. We actually share the lot with Tobin James. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with that winery. Tobin and I are good friends. And uh, yeah, we share the fruit every year together. It's a lot of fun. And every year we usually we go up and visit them and we bring some of ours and they give us some of theirs and we try to you know say who's is better and all that fun stuff. So it's a little fun uh, project for us. 
Yeah, this is just, just, I'm going to let you, you go off and talk about it because this is just, well, it's bursting with like dark cherries and um, raspberry jam. Um, I get like a meaty black pepper. There's like a little bit, just that nice pepper note to it. Some cedar. It was aged 26 months in um, 40% new French oak. So um, you definitely get that in the cedar spice notes. Uh, that element, secondary element, um, yeah, the mouth, unfiltered. The mouth, it's unfiltered. The mouth feel. I mean, it's just so round and well balanced, and it just, covers every surface in your mouth. It's the just, lingering finish yeah. just stays with you. Um, two different style wines, which I think is really fun about this shipment. You know, as I mentioned, you have the medium body to just a hair bit more on the old vine Zin. Vecchio, this is a full body wine. Um, of course, all the meats and, and pastas and meals we mentioned earlier that they Zin could go with and pairing would obviously work well with this as well. But this barbecued is barbecued ribs even. But, oh, went that that'd good. be perfect. A juicy, this. delicious steak. Yeah, it goes with really good. Or if you just really want to drink a big red by yourself, this <laughs> just is... don't pair it with anything. <laughs> just <laughs> drink to it. keep helping you get through this quarantine. Uh, yeah, I like this that. Is... That does not meant to be paired with anything. Yeah. Um, oh, that's just, yeah. it's wonderful. So or look, just a cheese, just some, you know, killer yeah. cheeses with, uh, with this wine. Um, I'm just ecstatic about it. I, so really, I don't know I if we mentioned, um, Lagrine is an Italian varietal from the Alto Adige region in Northern Italy. Mm -hmm. And it's, like I said earlier, it's very under the radar. There isn't a lot of it planted around the world. And, um, it's just been a really fun wine for us to have in our portfolio. And, uh, just one that really makes us stand out in Southern California because there aren't very many. I don't think there's many people making this down here. No, we're the only ones in Southern Cal. Yeah. Um, the, when I originally uh, found the vineyard and wanted to bring it, I wanted to use it for a blending wine. And that's what it's predominantly used for, specifically in Italy. Um, but I tried it on its own and I just fell in love with it. I thought it was just something unique and it's something that unique that we could offer. And that's when the old, for old Friar name came with it and everything. Um, just seemed like that just be a unique item for us to produce. Um, so uh, us as well and Tobin felt the same way. It's funny, after I met Tobin James and we started talking about the LeGrand grape, he felt exactly the same way as I did uh, initially. And then when we, uh, you know, we tried, we both wanted to make it on its own. So uh, just a fun wine, again, truly unique item. Um, doesn't sound Italian. LeGrand, people think it sounds German. <laughs> You know, Lagrine, Rhine, I don't know, but it's not. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, an under. Like uh, I think Olivia summed it up. It's a very under the radar wine, and uh, we're really excited to uh, share it with you on this shipment. We hope you enjoy it. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, guys. Salute. Salute. Cheers.